Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. You're watching Metropole Business Center and like I promised you, we're having a discussion on matters coffee farming in Kenya and we have the chairman of Kenya Coffee Producers right here in studio, the Kenya Coffee Producers Association chairman, Peter Gikonyo is right here with us. Thank you so much, sir, for making time for us. All okay. right, we start right away and um, looking at the coffee farming and uh, where the country is right now, what, what's the status of coffee farming as we speak? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, as I have uh, just said, uh, my name is uh, Peter Gekonyo. Mm -hmm. I'm the chairman of Kenya Coffee Producers Association. Um, the status of Kenya Coffee as it were today is uh, not very certain. And uh, from my opinion, uh, I would say that because one is because of the production, which has been affected so much by the weather. We have seen um, in the month of January there was rain, in the month of February there is still rain, which will now affect the, the flowering. So basically that means by the end of the year there could be some decline in coffee production. On the other hand, there is also the problem with COVID, the production and also the issue of market. Cost of production has also come up, or rather has gone up because again uh, of the same issues. So basically, the, the issue to do with the coffee production in Kenya is not very, very certain. The other aspect is in terms of um, how coffee is being managed in Kenya. The sensitization in terms of uh, registrations uh, to the farmers. Farmers sometimes do not understand what is happening with the changes in policies, changes in uh, the the current uh, act because like um, just the other day in 2019 mm -hmm. we had uh, the new coffee general regulations now we are again uh, back again with the coffee uh, coffee bill 2020 so the status of um, coffee is not very certain mm -hmm. but we are seeing a lot of intervention a lot of efforts by the government to try and uh, jump start um, the, the, the coffee production also affecting the marketing, also think, looking at um, issues to do with the processing because we are talking about very old machineries, dilapidated infrastructures, and all those contributes to the end product. And I also want to maybe put a highlight on uh, the coffee that we normally produce in Kenya. Uh, Kenya is known for its uh, specialty coffee. And for you to be able to produce a specialty coffee, there are so many attributes uh, ranging from the soils, the altitude, uh, the way you process your coffee. So at the end of the day, we might not be having a lot of production, but we can be able to leverage on the, um, the kind of coffee that we are producing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you mentioned that uh, due to weather, of course, we'll be getting into matters, the laws and the bills. Yeah. But when you say um, due to the weather, January, February, and we are seeing, you know, the flowering getting, um, you know, affected by this, what do you estimate the, you know, the decrease to be when you look at, you know, all factors put in place? You as the coffee farmers, what do you see as, as, as the, the impact at the end of it, the decrease level? What do you estimate it to be? Well, if, uh, if I look at what happened uh, last year, last year we also experienced similar uh, climate change or weather uh, changes. And uh, for those people who have uh, the old variety, the old coffee variety, it was really affected. And the decline was uh, more than 50%. So you could find a farmer who was doing around uh, 1,000 kgs, could not even do maybe 200 or thereabouts. So we are also expecting if the same continues, and therefore it means the, the, the production now will also be affected. And remember the coffees that had uh, some production is the new varieties, the Roiro, 11 and, and Batiani. Meaning again, because of that uh, aspect, we might not also expect a lot of production from the, those fields. Mm -hmm. So generally, there could be maybe a decline of approximate uh, uh, maybe around 
or to 15 per, or 15 to, to 20 percent mm -hmm. yes nationally now with this changing weather climate the weather patterns of course it could be the same issue again next year you know with the rains you cannot have any control over the rains is there a solution to this or what, what would you recommend to be a solution to this well uh, th there could be the uh, short-term measures mm -hmm. and there are also the long-term measures because uh, one as uh, the late Professor Angari Malai said that uh, nature is unforgiving, we, we have really tampered with the, with the nature and we are now seeing the consequences of our own actions. So as is, um, an organization, what we are looking at is to try to look for all those interventions that can be put by the government, uh, other stakeholders, to be able to ensure that coffee is, uh, is back to its position uh, co putting into consideration the, the new varieties because the new varieties are not as um, badly affected by weather changes as the old varieties. And uh, the main ones I'm talking about uh, the Royal Eleven and uh, the, the Batiani. So when you look at the, the effect on those uh, varieties, it's not as much as the, the old varieties. However, the people who have uh, planted the Batianis and Eloiros of rate, when uh, this has not taken maybe st around three, four, five years, it is also affected because uh, when it is young, it also requires a lot of um, care. So at that stage, people may feel like it's also being affected so badly. But once it takes around, uh, four, I mean, around five years when the root development is uh, stable, then you start getting the changes. It is able to withstand those weather changes and is also able to withstand uh, the diseases but there are some they are also prone to some pests uh, there are some pests like uh, the rips that normally affects them but once you are able to deal with uh, that issue or realize that issue in good time you are also able to address the, the, those challenges mm -hmm. in good time mm -hmm. so we are also encouraging people to to do the uh, planting of the trees and more specifically, like the babu, which is, uh, well, they say it is, uh, uh, is uh, classified as type of a grass. Because uh, baboos, you can be able to, to do them along the riverbeds. You can also do, be able to do them along the roads without a much uh, effect, um, a negative. It can also be used for firewood so that then people then stop cutting the other indigenous trees. They also, so, um, interventions by some NGOs that are also carrying out uh, some activities to are also geared to support the same. There are also other interventions in terms of uh, harvesting waters. Uh, even some uh, um, uh, NGOs are supporting uh, farmers to harvest water so that they can also do some bit of irrigation. So that then when there are some changes in the weather patterns, then you can be able to support your coffee to prepare it in good time so that then you are not uh, so much badly affected by the changes in the weather. There is also a discussion with the, with the government to see what can be done to support the coffee farmers. Because um, when we get some rivers drying up, uh, even processing coffee becomes, becomes, a, cha becomes a big challenge. Uh, because you see, for you to process coffee, you need water. Uh, so you might be forced to either look for uh, water that is uh, from a borehole or maybe get a pipe to water, which is also a bit expensive. So holistically, um, there's that discussion that is going, uh, going on between all the stakeholders because once it is affecting the farmer, it is also going to affect the farmer, uh, the, the, the market. It's also going to affect the, the consumer. And it will also affect the government because, again, it will lose on uh, tax revenues from, from the same, uh, uh, from the, those activities and also the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And um, among the issues that you raised, you, you talked about uh, the bills that are, you know, in discussion on, mm -hmm. you know, coffee bills and all that. Yes. And we're seeing um, uh, among the things that the government, rather the Ministry of Agriculture was working on is the Cherry Fund, which yes. has had a big debate on it. What's the position of farmers on the Cherry Fund? Mm, the position of the farmers as far as the Cherry Fund is uh, concerned has not been very positive. And this I would say that because uh, when Cherry Fund was being introduced, 
there was a mixed reaction, a mixed expectations. There were some farmers that were expecting the cherry fund will be like uh, free money to help jumpstart the coffee production. And therefore, people were expecting this money that was given by the president. Actually, they were referring it to Uhuru's money. Uh, and then there came also some bit of uh, politicking with the fund. So that aspect did not uh, help the farmers to be able to uh, borrow the funds. So and when now we come to the issue of borrowing, uh, you realize that um, it is a cherry advance fund. So basically it's supposed to be an advance against whatever has been produced and delivered to the factories or the societies. And therefore it's not a lot of money that is uh, going back to, to the farmers. And you see sometimes farmers are looking for money, uh, not the cost. Because if you want 10,000 shillings, uh, at the time you need that money, you may not really look at the cost. Mm -hmm. This is what has been happening. So, but gradually I know they will be able to positively respond mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm also happy with what the minister has been doing because uh, the minister has been very aggressive and very active together with the chairman uh, new KC, KPCU to try and uh, um, inform members because once the members or farmers are able to get the information then they will slowly start uh, picking up. Um, um, the last time I had a communication, I or rather shared notes with the chairman, uh, the indication was like we have around 4,000 farmers that have applied for the cherry advance uh, with approximate uh, 40 million, mm -hmm. so which is uh, very, slow, very, very low. So the uptake is there, low. Again, uh, there was this misconception that um, the smallholder farmers who are the main target for the funding must deliver their, their coffees to the, K, the, the new KPCU as it were. And uh, looking back to what had happened uh, in the past years, there was some money that got lost through the KPCU. Mm -hmm. So you see now with that kind of uh, mentality, before people change and accept that yes, what is happening is different from what was happening previously, mm -hmm. there's that time lapse. But I think uh, the chairman and his team and together with us, we are supporting what the government interventions are there. So when we, whenever you are having forums with the farmers, we are able to advise them that yes, uh, we have to change the way we are doing things because mm -hmm. again, whenever you borrow money and you'll have to pay that back with, uh, with an interest, mm -hmm. uh, which may not necessarily be within your control, it's very punitive to the farmers. So yes, we are encouraging them to do that, and hopefully maybe in the course of next year, things may be different, mm -hmm. yes. All right, and let's talk about uh, the reforms that were put, uh, you know, proposed, and some of them, I'm sure they're already beginning to roll out. Has there been any impact, and if there has been any impact on the reforms to the farmers and you as producers, what has this been? Well, um, there is um, a lot of interventions, uh, uh, registrations, uh, to try and support the farming, or rather revitalize the, the, the coffee farming. Mm -hmm. uh, but what has been happening is before even uh, the, the, the current regulation have been implemented fully, then we are seeing that uh, we are also getting into another bill that is still discussing about coffee. Uh, so there's that, that mixed reaction and mixed feelings mm -hmm. and people wondering now, uh, this is our position now, so, so what is expected of the farmers? So basically if you look at uh, those reforms, those reforms uh, um, basically a great percentage was uh, focusing on the market. Mm -hmm. And uh, the focus being in the market, there is one thing that uh, is very critical, which is production. And therefore you find um, the coffee production has been going down, but uh, always the discussion and the debate is uh, the production is going down because of the prices, which is, uh, which is uh, the, 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 the true position. Mm -hmm. But with the interventions looking at how to improve the prices, you cannot improve coffee prices without improving the production, without improving the quality. And um, coffee is a very interesting uh, 
a crop because uh, basically it is never sold like uh, like maize it is not even sold like uh, the way it is done mm -hmm. uh, but it is a special uh, crop that has a, a different way of uh, dealing with it and i want to give you a very clear example where you find uh, coffee is maybe from central kenya and coffee is uh, from uh, central rifts or the bungoma or Kipkerion, they may produce the same grade, which is um, uh, grade A to those other grades, A, B, C, T, 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 and, uh, and the likes. But you find when it is presented into the market, it gets different prices. And therefore you wonder, why would I produce a, a similar grade to some, I mean, with somebody, and yet they end up getting uh, better prices than we do. But if you look at again from a market perspective, I mean perspective, the, the 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 grading the way it is done, it is done at the, um, different levels. There is the grading itself, and there is also that other classification. So once the coffee is graded, they come up with the, what is referred to maybe uh, AA, AB, PB, TT, E. All those grades but then when it comes to the next level of um, classification you find there is another there is other classes class ranging from class one going up and therefore you find a, a coffee that is a a from a particular region may not necessarily come get into a class one and when coffee is being auctioned the 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 the, the what the attribute that they are looking for is now the classification. So you find if you have good coffees and uh, the classification is good, you end up getting good money. And this classification, again, will come with other attributes. But generally, that uh, is also coming from maybe where the, the coffee is grown, the attitude, uh, the weather, how it was also um, harvested and processed. So all those processes contributes to the end product mm -hmm. but when you are dealing with the farmers down there farmer only understands coffee that they produce they know it is arabica the best quality and which is used for breading which is a, which is a good and it is the case but we need to go to the next level to help them understand what is being sold in the market is different from what we are looking at mm -hmm. so that then we stop looking at um, the coffee in terms of uh, density, we look at how have we been able to process our coffee? Mm -hmm. How have we been able to produce our coffee? How again have we been able to store our coffee? Because again, there is a way you can store coffee, and then you end, you end up finding that the, that coffee has the octa uh, toxin, which is an equivalent of, what do you call it in the, in the maze? Eh? Um, so, we need to really understand so that then when the farmers are uh, doing their farming, they understand these processes so that then they have, there is a focus to the market and there is a focus to the consumer. Again, there is this uh, other issue, remember when uh, last time when we were giving our statement, there is this issue to do with the chemicals in the coffee, the, the minimum uh, residue levels or rather the maximum residue levels. Mm -hmm. So you find in some places, because of the, the, uh, the, the, um, those chemical traces in the coffees, uh, we have uh, our coffee being fragged, especially mm -hmm. in Japan. And these are uh, specialty coffee markets. So they may not have contributed so much in terms of the market size, mm -hmm. but they contribute so much in terms of the value. So if we keep on growing that, that market, yes, the prices will be better. Therefore means that the rate applicable to the farmers will also go up. But if, for example, we lose that market, it therefore means we must look for other markets. And looking for other markets means probably you now go to the alternative market, which, which may not necessarily fetch the good uh, quality, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, the, um, the best prices. Again, why Kenyan coffee is so much uh, regulated is because there is that need to preserve the quality, to preserve um, the, the, 
the way coffee, our coffee is defined as a specialty coffee. So that whoever wants to take specialty coffee, that market belongs to us. We may not be able to, con to compete with Akina Uganda, with um, Lobasta, but we can be able to produce enough coffee of good quality, which has its own market. All right. Yes. All right, good. And, and, and as we finish this in, <coughs> beg, your, <coughs> beg your pardon, in, in, in five seconds, Yes. what's the future of coffee? Well, there's future for coffee, but they are required to have a lot of government intervention mm -hmm. and all the other stakeholders' intervention, ranging from uh, managing weather, uh, developing new varieties that will be able to cope with the changes in weather, or with the start diseases, explore other um, uh, market instead of relying on uh, the, the traditional market. Try to also uh, analyze coffee and see whether there are other attributes in coffee that can also be used in uh, doing other um, issues like uh, breading of uh, beverages. Also looking at um, like the caffeine mm -hmm. can be able to be extracted for other commercial, commercial uses. So yes, if all the stakeholders can come together, the future for coffee, uh, Kenyan coffee is bright. But without any intervention, then the Kenyan coffee may go down and uh, it become history. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you so very much for making time for us. That's Peter Gikonyo, the chairman. Kenya Coffee Producers Association speaking to us on matters, the state of coffee. Thank you again. And we look forward to having more discussions on coffee right here on the show. Thank you so much. All right. And uh, enjoy your day. Great. Right. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Uh, it's on the, that note we take a short break. But before that, we're asking you, what are the two types of coffee do we have? What are those two types of coffee do we have? Uh, remember to send me your responses and we'll be sampling your responses and the answers at the tail end of this show. But we're taking a short break. When we come back, we have your innovation segment, we have your agri-facts, and also we have what's happening at the NSC. Don't go so far.